This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my patrons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Close Color Showdown. This is episode six, and we're gonna carry on looking at the manganese violet. Here we have not the master on the lifting glaze, and on the whole, manganese violet is like cobalt in that they're gonna be pretty easy to lift. The easiest one to lift, I would say, are the Da Vinci one, the old Holland one, but on the whole, they're not hugely staining. The ones that are surprisingly staining, apart from these two, uh, the Roman small one is pretty, I would say, semi-staining, as well as the Sennelier one. But yeah, you're not going to have too much trouble. The one that I had the most amount of trouble lifting compared to how light the Mastone is was the My Mary Blue. It just wasn't behaving in the way that manganese violets should behave. So there's definitely a quality issue happening here on top of that paper being stuck, which these dots are the paper that was stuck. I tried to remove all of it, but there was some still left in there. And then Ken Bromley, even though it's supposed to be the same pigment as the rest, is very staining, like a dark Suzanne Violet. Am I just, is it just me that, you know, noticing that kind of thing? And then the PB18 with the SAS Manganese Violet is also quite staining. Let's take a look at how good these colors are glazing. And in terms of the more traditional Manganese Violet colors, the Old Holland's Manganese Violet Blue is beautiful for glazing. You can see the bottom layer clearly. There's no lifting, it's beautiful. Colors that are a little bit more difficult for you to be able to glaze in particular a block X because that's lifting really easily. Same with Rembrandt. Roma Small Da Vinci, they're all a little bit uneven. Old Holland Manganese Violet Red and Turner. So if you are into your glazes, then I recommend the Old Holland one. It's absolutely beautiful, it goes on evenly. The My Mary Blue one is pretty good at glazes as well, ironically. But again, as a color, I can't really recommend this one to you. These two again, surprisingly for a staining color that's transparent, it's very patchy here, so not very good. The SAA one is actually pretty good. It's very smooth and you can see the layer underneath very clearly, but it is PV18. So if you are a PV16 fan and that's why you have the manganese violet, then again, might not be enough to convince you to try a PB18. Then we have the salt test. And here, I don't think there's much reaction. There's a little bit on the Block X and a tiny bit on the Ken Bromley. There's actually quite a lot of reaction on the Ken Bromley. You just don't see it because it's so dark. But if you want a subtle effect, this will do. The normal PB16s don't tend to react that much. I have to say though, the Sennelier one, the reaction is really interesting. You get these spider legs kind of reactions rather than these normal like star shaped reactions. So that might be something that's interesting. And again, the blue is separated from the pink. So even though it's PB16, there's definitely two tones of color in the paint. Now we have the cotton paper test, and this is where we look at how the hue might vary depending on what color paper. This is cellulose, this is 100% cotton. Let's take a look. I would say that here, the dual tone test, the pink and the blue is more prominent on the cheaper paper, which is really interesting because it's like, oh, th there are time and a place for cheaper paper, even if you can afford cotton paper. If you want that effect to be more prominent, paper quality might make that difference. Da Vinci looks same. Roman Schmore, I say it looks a little bit paler on the cotton paper. Rembrandt, I say the mass tone at the top it looks dark on the cellulose paper. I think the biggest difference is in Block X because I would say with Block X on cotton paper it's like yeah that looks exactly like all the other manganese blue, it's this kind of hue 
and granulation that I expect from manganese violet, whereas on cellulose paper, it's completely different. Like, if you just saw these two, you would say these are two completely different colors. This looks smooth, it's more intense, it's redder, whereas this is more muted, granulating. It looks completely different. So if you do use block X, it'd be worth trying on different quality of paper and see which paper you like the reaction of this paint to the most. Turner looks pretty much the same, Old Holland Manganese Violet Red. I would say that this is a little bit redder and deeper than on the cotton. The Manganese Violet Blue by Old Holland, again this looks a little bit paler. My Mary Blue looks about the same, Ken Bromley it looks about the same, but this suffers from lots of little white dots like very very fine white dots and then whereas you don't get that on the cellulose paper and then on manganese violet by SAA I would say it's a little bit paler on the cotton than on the cellulose. Then we have the colour mixes and shall we address the elephant in the room? The Ken Bromley one is out of the PV60s by far has the highest tinting strength by a mile and again, this would be my exhibit. I don't know what number we are on, on the argument that this can't be PV16. I would lean towards dioxys in purple, but it's a little bit red for dioxys in purple, so I don't know what's going on, but it's not the same as the rest. The second most high tinting strength is the manganese violet PV18 by SAA. But looking at no more PV16, the highest tinting strength I would say is the Roman Schmoll one. Also beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color mixes with its complement, which for the manganese violet, you want something like a hooker's green, like a not too yellow green, but not too blue green. The hooker's green by Holbein is a really good match. But even if you get the mixture, the wet mixture perfectly gray, because manganese blue is heavily granulating, you're going to get the dual tone look rather than the more even, perfectly gray look. You can get them in some of the colors, the, the more homogenized gray look with things like the block X, because as we saw on cellulose paper, it doesn't show up the granulation too much. But can I just say, I love this texture and I love this color combo of the yellow, and the pink coming through in a line. I think that is beautiful. In terms of showing up the most granulation throughout all the color mixes, I would say Schmincke is pretty good. It's very strong granulations and you see it very well on all of them. I love that one as well. After that, I would say is Turner and Da Vinci and Block X. Another more paler elephant in the room is the My Mary Blue, which just had no tinting strings whatsoever. If you like to see how these paints really paint with the paints you have and the papers you like to use, then I have the perfect dot card for you. This month's Patreon dot card is the companion dot card to this series. It is a manganese violet and you get Schmigge, Sonalia, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, Block X, Turner, Old Holland, Ken Bromley. So if you're really curious about the Block X and whether it will work with your paper, this is a great way of testing out for less than the cost of a tube or five mil color. You get to test eight colors without having to commit to buying eight whole tubes. So this is a really economical way of testing out these colors and there's plenty on there for you so you can mix it with your paints and do some paintings with it before you commit to buying your perfect manganese violet. If you'd like to receive this dot card, then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno and sign up to the appropriate tiers and I will be sending these dot cards to you very shortly. That's it for manganese violet. What did you think of these colors? Which one was your favorite? Which one was your least favorite? Do let me know in the comments down below. And uh, how are you feeling about Ken Bromley? I I was really surprised. I was really excited about bringing in a British brand because, you know, I'm British and I like to support local businesses, but certainly for this color and we will see other Ken Bromley colors and we'll see how that behaves with the other brands. But for this one, I'm feeling more dubious about their brand and how they choose their pigments. My Mary Blue is still at the bottom of my 
ladder in terms of what professional brands are like. It just has so many quality control issues that are just not even funny anymore. It was lovely to have both the manganese violet red and blue and really interesting that even with the same brand, same pigment, they behave so differently which was not something that I was expecting. So that's fun. And it's really good to see all these new brands like Rembrandt and Block X. Block X, I think, is hugely interesting in terms of how different it behaves depending on paper. I am looking forward to testing their other colors that are coming up in the rest of the series to see if that is a brand wide thing or if it's just specific to the manganese violet by Block X. On the whole, which one would I pick as a manganese? Violet. If I was looking for a traditional manganese violet, I would go for something like the Schmincke one because it's the definition of what I think of when I think of manganese violet. It's this reddish soft purple that is granulating, a little bit opaque, but not too much on any of those features. If you want an interesting manganese violet though, the Sennelier's Red Violet has that two-toneness that's gorgeous. In terms of hue though, like what hue, regardless of it, if it's manganese violet or not, do I like out of all this? My eyes definitely go for the manganese violet red, even though it does have that air bubble problem. I think it's a beautiful hue and it's slightly different from the rest of what's available as manganese violet. So that is lovely. So I would say, Schmincke, Sennelier and the Manganese Violet Red by Old Holland is a great choice. Definitely avoid My Merry Blue, at least in the pan. I'm not going to say avoid the Ken Bromley one or the SAA one. They're just different and they definitely don't behave like a Manganese Violet. But they have their place in somebody's palette. I mean, I love Dykes in Purple and this is a nice one. It's a more ready one. So... If it wasn't called Manganese Violet, I would definitely be a fan of this colour. Next episode, we're going to start looking at the Manganese Blue Hue. And very excitingly, we do have a genuine Manganese Blue coming in in that episode as well. So I hope you look forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the hue colours compare to the genuine Manganese Blue. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want any of these paints, then it's down in the link below. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!